So hello everyone. I don't know like, is it morning, afternoon or evening? So uh, hello everyone. Um, it's our honor to have you all in our today's webinar. Uh, I am Mariam al Ahmadi, the Vice President of uh, Science and Research and Ideas, along with Muhammad Elias. He is a webinar's coordinator and course secretary. Um, we have a very special guest today. Um, and it's our honor as IDS to have Dr. Um, Dr. Adiriza for today's webinar. Thank you so much for accepting. So the, thank you, Doctor. So the floor is for Mohammed Elias to uh, moderate the session. All right, thank you, Maria. Uh, today is very special for us. It's like the first session after the SPA webinar month. I can see some of the names that have been there also present here. We appreciate the, the commitment, especially during this exam period. So uh, today's session is very special. It's about 3D printing. We're, uh, we're talking the future right now. We have a very, very special guest. Uh, someone who was, I was personally very looking forward to, to have this, this session as, a, as an enthusiast of 3D printing. We have Dr. Alir Zaprovis. He is an oral maxillofacial surgeon. He was associate and professor in Tahran University of Medical Science, and he has a fellowship of maxillofacial oncology. He's an undergraduate program director, dental college in the Tehran University of Medical Science, and he's also head of maxillofacial department, Sina General Hospital, Tehran University of Medical Sciences. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, all the, your honor, honor in house today. Uh, the floor is yours, Dr. Aliza. Thank you, Mohamed. Hello, everybody. Hello, my friends, dear students. I'm honored to be here today at the IADC event and would like to begin my expressing uh, by expressing my gratitude to my friends, Mohammed and Mariam. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. And I hope my, my words will contribute positively to the discussion and the ideas being uh, shared here. Uh, let me share my screen to start the presentation. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mama, for introducing me before. So my topic is about 3D printing in dentistry. We'll talk about the present and the future of 3D printing. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk about what is 3D printing and uh, what's the history of it in dentistry. What are different type of printers and what are the materials used in 3D printers in dentistry? First of all, what is 3D printing? It's the main question. 3D printing is a manufacturing technology, uh, additive manufacturing technology in which that we can make or create physical objects uh, by, uh, by special materials, creating them in layer by layer. It means that we have to slice a digital object in different, in different layers and making the object by 3D printer, uh, printers in layer and by layer to complete a whole physical object. That's the main definition of the printers. 3D printers. Doctor, there's a, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, we can't see the screen. You cannot see the screen? Yes, yes, yes. It's still loading maybe to, you have to load it back again because it didn't work the first time, I think. Does it work now? Let me stop the sharing and then start the game, yeah? All right. Now, do you have my screen? Do you have my slides? It's still not now. Not now? No. <laughs> it is it already was. Yes, it worked the first time. Mm-hmm. What's the problem? Yeah, maybe choose the option of uh, of uh, of sharing the whole screen, not just a specific application. Maybe that would work. Can you see my slides now? We can't see the screen yet. We can see the, the camera. So you don't have my camera? No, no, I, I can see I can see your face. I can see the camera, not the not the screen. Check. 
that's what now. Mm. Nope, not yet. Wait, it's it's loading. Let me check. Yeah, we have checked it. Just something is beautiful. What did happen? So not yet, doctor. It's like a bearded plant. Okay, let me <clears throat> work with solar laptops. I don't know what is happening here. So, Sorry, I'm trying the, another laptop. No problem, Doctor. Take your time. Do you have my video now? Do you see me? Yeah, we can see you. Yeah. <clears throat> Could you try more time to share screen, but full screen? Mm. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Now, yes. Can you see yeah. my screen? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Is it okay? You can. Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, in this presentation, we'll talk about what is 3D printing and about the history of 3D printing in dentistry and different type of printers and materials used for 3D printing. Okay, the first question is, what is 3D printing? <clears throat> 3D printing is an additive manufacturing uh, technique in which uh, we, we create a physical object by, uh, by adding the material. All right, we, we excuse everyone. Doctor has a little bit of uh, network problem. We ref, we're fixing this with him and we'll, we'll try to resume the session. Uh, we're into very, uh, very fine and delicate layers. And then printing these layers by special materials, layer by layer, and then complete the whole object. That's the 3D printing definition. <clears throat> About the story, I have to say that in, it was in 1990s that the 3D printers entered the world of dentistry, but it was in 20s that uh, we had the development of 3D printers. And in, uh, in the late of uh, 2010s, SLM printers, uh, which can uh, produce uh, um, objects by directly from metals, entered the world of the dentistry and was a revolution. If I want to talk about the difference, all right, we apologize for uh, the issue again. F10 printers. <clears throat> the F10 printers, as I told you, that uh, there are special materials in these printers in the form of filament that go through a um, heated nozzle and then of melting these materials to make an object layer by layer. If the thickness of these layers are less than 20 microns, so we can have a very high quality and high resolution object. But uh, the F10 printers also uh, are the most common used printers in the history, but they have also some drawbacks. 
For example, they have low quality in compared with other printers and also uh, they are very slow in compared with DLP and SLM printers. So they are used especially for dental study models or skeletal study models and also for whitening and whitening trays. The second uh, printer which are used in dentistry is DLP. <clears throat> Uh, oh, it's uh, in these printers we have a source of light and also we have a reservoir or a tank of resin in which that the light can cure the resin layer by layer. There is a difference between DLP and SLA printers. In SLA printer, they use laser instead of the light, but in in DLP. Uh, printer, uh, there is a source of light uh, which can uh, make a whole layer by just one exposure. So the speed of this printer is much more higher in compared with FDN printers and also the SLA printers. And also because of the quality of the resin resins and the resolution of these printers, also they can create high quality, high resolution material objects. So we can use the other printers to create implant surgical guides, delicate dental models, surgical cutting guides, and also orthogonatic explains, which we, I, I will explain later. And also we can use these printers to make uh, temporary or even crowns, even res permanent restorations, and also in orthodontic clear aligners. <clears throat> The third one, the third printer, which is using the dentistry, uh, is SLM selective laser melting pr printers. Uh, we have a, a clip here. I will show you how SLM printers is used. Look at this uh, clip. Uh, to create such this object, uh, first of all, we have to uh, slice this object by by special software. This object is divided into different slices, and then the printer can create each slice layer by layer. In SLM printer, it's the powder fusion uh, technique. We have very thin layer of uh, of the metal. It could be titanium, stainless steel, or even a layer like um, from cobalt, and so on. The source of the laser will melt the layer of the metal, layer by layer, and fuse the fuse each of these layers together. So finally, we can make such these objects, and this is. Uh, uh, PS5, or patient specific implant per manual we use for our patient. I will show you the slides later. This is the technology of SLM printers in which the laser and the powder of the titanium could uh, make and create such a disruption. <clears throat> Because of the higher resolution and high quality of these printers, we use SLM printers uh, to create the entire crown and bridge, and also for PS and patient specific implants. Okay, let me talk about the benefit of the print the 3D printers. If I talk about the benefits, I have to mention first that it increased the precision and the quality of the dental products. So finally, it can rise the patient satisfaction. Uh, <clears throat> and the second is that uh, it, it will reduce the time and also it will reduce the cost of the dental products. Let me talk about the application of 3D printing in the industry. There are different applications. Uh, one of the most useful and the most common use of the 3D printers in the industry nowadays is dental restoration. Maybe up to some years ago, we usually use milling machine to create and make a dental restoration, especially for crown and only, uh, only crown. 
uh, but nowadays we can make them by 3D printers, especially DLP, by a very high quality, not only permanent restoration, but also with not only temporary restoration, but also we can create or fabricate um, permanent restoration by using 3D printers. And also we can uh, use 3D printers to fabricate orthodontic clear aligners. Uh, in a clear aligner treatment in orthodontic, uh, there are different stages. The orthodontic, uh, orthodontist uh, separate the treatment, whole treatment into five or 10 stages, and they can design and fabricate this clear aligner for each, for each stage because uh, it's so comfortable for the patient nowadays. It's, it's the trend between the patient to, who are seeking for orthodontic treatment. Uh, another application, especially in the field of surgery, that is my specialty, is about uh, to make implant surgical guides, and which we can use them to insert the implants in uh, exactly in the position and the by angulation which we have designed uh, before in the software. Another use uh, is about the bone reduction glide. We can even we can control the amount of bone we can reduce for the surgery before dental implant insertion. Now I want to see you a uh, clinical cases about the uh, implant surgical guide. It was an old lady. <clears throat> she wants me. She was seeking for dental implant treatment in the posterior of the mandible. But as you see in the CBCT, there are not enough bone height, uh, especially in the second or first molar region on both sides. So we decided to insert implants simultaneously by a nerve transposition surgery. Uh, after creating a virtual crown and defining the position and angle of each implant, we designed the uh, surgical guide for implant surgery. It's very important that before designing the surgical guide, we define the position and angulation and even depth impact in the software. Dr. Lerza? Okay, we apologize. We are um, we're checking with the doctor. Hey, doctor. We 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 missed you for a little bit. Yes. Can you hear us? All right. Dr. Lirza? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. You can hear me? Thank you. Yes, we can. I hope this is the last bad chance. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if you see this slides before. 
Uh, no, we we are we were the previous one, the one with the surgical guide of uh, the implant. Previous uh, slide, yes. No, I I think the previous one, the one with uh, with one surgical guide and the other one I forgot what was there. Okay, let me talk about the first uh, the first right. slide. <clears throat> okay, uh, it was an old lady who was seeking for dental implant for posterior of the mandible in both sides, but as you see in the CBCP, we don't have enough bone height. So we, designed, we decided to do implant surgery, implant insertion simultaneously with the inferior volar nerve uh, transposition. Uh, after creating virtual crowns, uh, we um, defined the position and angulation and even depths of the implants in the mandible. Uh, so because we need the angulation and even the position of implants for the surgical guide, after defining the position, we designed a, a surgical guide for dental implants, but it was not a usual uh, implant surgical guide, but also it was a surgical guide to trace the path of the inferior alveolar nerve also. Now show, I will show you the uh, slides of the surgery. Uh, after crystal incision with anterior releasing, we expose the whole uh, mandibular bone and inferior alveolar nerve. Uh, uh, let me show you by laser pointer. Here is the inferior volar nerve. We expose it to keep it safe. And also in the left side, this is the inferior volar nerve. We expose it completely. Then we insert the uh, implant surgical guide, which is, is to support a surgical guide. Then we define the path of the inferior volar nerve by a round bow. In both sides, as you see, this guide not only show us the path of the nerve, but also preserve the inferior volar nerve also. Then you see here, it's a path of the nerve uh, by the minimum bone reduction. And after completing this path, we extract the nerve from the canal uh, by the minimum bone reduction here. We not only do the nerve transposition, but also we insert two implants as we designed already in the software. And also in the left side, we extract the nerve from the channel with transposition, the nerve, and then insert two implants simultaneously with the nerve transposition surgery with the minimum bone reduction. Okay. Let me talk about the workflow of digital planning for implant surgery. <clears throat> um, it has four stages to delivery, the surgical guide, and also the processes to the patient. Data collection, computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, and final delivery of the product to the patient. In data collection, we need two sources of data. First of all, a CBCT or a spiral CT in which we can uh, have all data from bone and tooth and teeth of the patient in both mandible and maxilla and whole face also. And the second source of data, we need the uh, occlusion and teeth of the patient, which can uh, collect them by scanning a dental models by laboratory scanners, or even we can scan the, the whole teeth and occlusion of the patient by intro scanners. So we have two kinds of uh, information. The first is a DICOM file, which is extracted in the, from the CVCT or spiral CT uh, into radiology. And the second is a STL file, which is, a, which is the result of oral scanner or laboratory scanners. In the second stage in computer-aided design, we can design and uh, position the implants. But as you know that the implant uh, surgery is, is a process driving treatment. It means that before inserting the implants, we have to make the, make the restoration uh, which we can create in the future. It means that the position of these crowns will define or will uh, show us where is the position of the implant, where is the correct position of the implant, not, uh, not the available bone. So after doing the virtual rex of or virtual tooth placement in the knee uh, places, 
we uh, define our treatment plan uh, to insert in four implants. In digital planning and digital software, we can also <clears throat> uh, see the position and also we can assess the uh, angulation of the implant. Also, we can assess the relation between the implant and adjusting teeth and roots and also special landmarks in the maxilla and mandible. So we can see the implant in three, uh, 360 degree or completely three-dimensionally. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, not in the uh, CBCT, we not only can see the position exactly of the implant, but also we can see even the position of implant in relation with uh, special landmarks in the mandible and according to the inferior roller nerve. So it uh, will rise our safety. It means that the surgical guide can uh, arise at the safety of the surgery. So because we can assure about the position and the distance between the implant and the ferrovolar the nerve. Also, another information, useful information in which we can get by CVCT is like this case in which we can see some cortical bone resorption in the buccal side of the central incisor. Here, so we can plan for the for GBR. Uh, accompanied by play implant placement in the first or uh, in the central incisor position. So we can see all, all this information just, we can get all this information just by the CBCT. It's very useful. And the third stage, then we can uh, manufacture or fabricate this. Um, uh, these surgical guides by special 3D printers, as I mentioned before. Uh, according to the support of these uh, surgical guides, I have to say that we have three kinds of surgical guides for dental implants. The most common used and the most uh, um, friendly used uh, surgical guide for dental implants is two supported. It means that both sides of these uh, surgical guide is completely laid down on the teeth. So, because it, do, it doesn't have any movement during the surgery and uh, it's a completely tough, we can assure that the implant will be positioned exactly as we have already designed the software. And if they don't need any um, accompanying surgery like a GBR or any other bone grafting techniques, we can do this surgery by punch technique or flapless techniques. Uh, these guides have the much more accuracy uh, in compared with two others that I, I will mention later. The second type of surgical guide for dental implants is, uh, two, uh, is a soft tissue supported. Uh, it, it means that it's completely laid down on the soft tissue. It's used in this in patient uh, who are completely dentulous in mandula or maybe in maxilla but there are some drawback or limitation in this kind of uh, surgical guides because uh, we cannot assure that these, if these surgical guides is seated uh, in, in the right position or not, the soft tissue is resilient or it can be compressed. So uh, we cannot assure that if the surgical guide is positioned correctly or not. And another thing that we have to, <clears throat> uh, we have to secure these, surgical guides by tag pins here. As you see, with three different tags, the surgical guide is secured in the position. But it has so many advantages. Also, it's that we can do the surgery in a, by punch technique and flapless technique. This kind of a surgical guide is useful, especially in patient who have enough bone they, in which they, we don't need any techniques for bone grafting and so on. The third one is to is wound supported surgical guide. As you see, in compared with two others, it is much more aggressive and much more invasive. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, to using this kind of uh, <clears throat> surgical guide, we need a very big incision and huge exposure. This kind of surgical guides are used when we want to put uh, in, to insert implants in a company with different uh, techniques or different different bone techniques. For example, GBR, sense lifting, uh, sense lifting, and even uh, 
bridge splitting and also and something like that. But if there is a very big drawback or limitation of this kind of surgical guide, that's that uh, it's very invasive compared with two others. So most of surgeons prevent to avoid this kind of uh, implant as surgical guide. Another application of 3D printers in dentistry is used uh, to create or fabricate a uh, space for orthogenetic surgery. <clears throat> what, is, what is orthogenetic surgery and what's the role of splints in the orthogenetic surgery? In this, in this movie, you can see the digital uh, model surgery of orthogenetic surgery in, in a patient who needs uh, biomax surgery. <clears throat> In orthogenetic surgery, by orthogenetic surgery, <clears throat> we can uh, correct the position of maxilla, the relation between mandible and maxilla. We can move the maxilla and mandible in any direction and any amount of us. In digital planning, we can simu simulate the whole surgery previous, before the surgery in the software. The orthogenetic surgery will start uh, with the reposition of the maxilla. First of all, reposition of the maxilla. In this patient, uh, we have advancement of the maxilla. After advancement, we have to fix in the new position. But the main question is that, how we can be sure that the maxilla is, is in the right position? It's the, it's the splint, orthogonatic splint. It's intermediate splint that can help us to define and assure us that the maxilla is exactly in the right position. You see how we can fabricate the dental splints. This dental splint in which, uh, which can define the position of the maxilla in the orthogonatic surgery will be fabricated by 3D printers. <clears throat> so by using these splints, we can uh, <clears throat> treat a patient like this with a very huge open bite, uh, we can do the surgery, biomax surgery, and secure the maxilla and mandible in their correct position using these splints, intermediate and final splints. So, <clears throat> so we can now, you know, uh, about the orthogonatic surgeon and role of the splints in the orthogonatic surgery. Another application, it's very interesting. It's surgical cutting guide. What does it mean? Uh, as you know, to treatment of uh, pathologic lesions in the maxillofacial region, we have to cut not only uh, to have to remove not only the pathologic lesion, but also some part of the intact uh, tissue, hard tissue or soft tissue. The distance between uh, the border of the pathologic lesion and the amount of the intact uh, tissue, uh, which we can re we, we have to remove, is uh, named uh, safe margin. For example, in <clears throat> uh, treatment of amyloblastoma of the mandible, we have to yield at least one centimeter of safe margin. So, how we can define one centimeter about uh, 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 um, uh, far from the border of the pathologic lesion? These cutting guides can help us. We can define the safe margin border from the CBCT and according to that these data, we can create such these cutting guides. We have a real case here. <clears throat> this is a schematic uh, photo of a patient with a uh, pathologic lesion of the right side, uh, side of the mandible after designing and uh, this surgical guide we fabricated and then cutting the whole mandible, whole heavy mandible. Now it's a real case. She's a 18 years lady with the story of amyloblastoma of the lower man of the mandible, the rings in the body. We design and create this cutting guide and cut the mandible by the soul here. So we can assure that we are cutting in the right position, exactly the angulation, even and the position of the cut. We separated these two parts and then we remove and extract whole hemi mandible from the condyle here, pronoid here, and this is the second prevola. This is cutting guide. It's very useful, especially in pathology. 
surgery. One of the most interesting application of 3D printers in dentistry is using them to create or fabricate patient-specific implants, or PSI. Uh, <clears throat> uh, let me show you some cases here. I will continue my presentation to show four or five cases. Here we have a case. Uh, she is an old lady with the story of uh, aggressive lesion of the mandible. Fortunately, this lesion is benign, but very aggressive. It means that uh, it creates such a disappearance just less than one year. <clears throat> so we have two options. We have to remove all the lesion and reconstruction demand we are using iliac graft, but uh, the patient will refuse to accept uh, doing iliac uh, bone reconstruction, using iliac bone reconstruction. So we go to the second, uh, second uh, option. It was PSI, patient-specific implant to reconstruction of the mandible, <clears throat> okay? After complete assessment of the patient document, we start the surgery using extra oral approaches. We create a big incision in the neck beneath, beneath the jaw, the mandible and do exposure of whole the lesion <clears throat> extraorally. Then, as you see, the whole lesion is here. Then we put the surgical guide, the cutting guide. We have designed already by the software. Okay, it's the surgical guide, the surgical cutting guide. So by using these cutting guides, we are sure that the safe margin is yellow. <clears throat> We reject and extract the whole lesion from uh, angle to angle. And we, did, uh, we use the pre-designed PSI for this patient that, is, that can simulate whole the mandible for hair. And also we designed some parts for dental implants in this PSI patient specific implant, which is fabricated by titanium using SLM printers. This is the real one, which is printed by SLM printer. And then we insert the PSI in the correct position. And finally, we realign the whole uh, supra, uh, super, super thyroid and even genuglous uh, muscles to reorient them because we want to uh, recurrent uh, to uh, uh, once that the patient have a good function to chewing and speaking after the surgery. That is the final result of the, the surgery, and you can compare before and after that. Very interesting. It is a follow up radiography of the patient almost two years later. <laughs> and you can see that this patient can speak immediately after the surgery. This clip is just 10 hours after the surgery. You can hear and see how she can speak. Uh, as you see that using this technique, uh, the, uh, the patient has very fast recovery. She can speak uh, fluently immediately after the surgery. That's the benefit of this kind of reconstruction. This photo is for two years follow-up uh, with no sign of infection, exposure, and any problem, fortunately, after two years. The second case <clears throat> is by the young man with the story of very severe trauma, motorcycle accident. In the first surgery, we fixed all the mandibular and maxillary fractures. But as you see in this photo, we have, uh, we have an avulsion of bone and teeth here in the right, left side of maxilla. The patient come back and uh, want us to reconstruct this, uh, this part of the face because he had no teeth and uh, also he had some depression here in the bow and the face. So we designed uh, this kind of uh, 
PSI patient specific implant, this kind of PSI methodology reconstruction, reconstruct the teeth, but also reconstruct in contour the malar and sub malar region also. So we do the surgery by intro approaches. We expose all hold the maxilla in the left side and putting and inserting the PSI in the right position and secure it by fixing and by a screw and fasten the screw there. And you can see the final result. And this is the follow-up photo of the patient after one and a half years. These are new teeth here. And the PSI abutments in different angulation. This is the part of maxilla in which uh, we had bone, avulsion, and also two slugs, a big segment. And this is the final result of the one and a half years. It shows that the patient is so satisfied of the result of the surgery. And also there is no depression here in the left side of the maxilla and the face. Uh, the third case is also a very young lady with the story of severe maxillary atrophic ridge, and also she refuses to do my sinus lifting or using iliac bone graft reconstruction of the maxilla. So we have another option is to reconstruct it using um, special uh, patient specific implants or superior cell implants for maxilla. We design this kind of implants for the maxilla. And uh, after designing, we fabricate it. And also we do anodizing to change the color. We use this uh, color because uh, we want to hidden the, the, the dark color of the titanium beneath the uh, soft tissue in the mouse. The surgery is done by intraoral approach and inserting the implants in the right position and uh, uh, and securing the whole maxilla. And this is the final result after delivery, the final restoration to the patient and show the patient satisfaction by these techniques. These techniques in which we don't use any bone grafts, so we, uh, we have less morbidity in compare with other reconstruction techniques, for example, iliac bone grafts and so on. Uh, the patient will recover very fast and we, she can uh, have the final result very, 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 in a very in a fast period, short period. Another case is a man with the story of gunshot in the right eye. Uh, he had the story of two unsuccessful um, surgeries before to reconstruct the orbit. Uh, so she referred to me to reconstruct your bit using a patient specific implant. We designed such these patient specific implant to reconstruct the whole orbital wall in lateral inferior and also orbital floor. And also we reconstruct the zygomatic arc and mass of malar region and the malar buttress here. Okay, after designing, we start the surgery. Uh, after designing, we fabricate it and then start with the surgery. This is the patient before the surgery. <clears throat> we use uh, previous scars to create such as incision on the face. Its name is very Ferguson approach. We put the first part and secure it by a screw here in the intact bone, and then we <clears throat> put the second part. As you see, the connection is a Lego type and secure also these with six screw here. And this is the final result after just one month, after the first surgery. Very interesting, we use the navigation system in company with the PSI. I will show you how navigation system help, help us in this surgery. We connect a navigation uh, fiducial to the first part first segment of the PSI. In this clip, you can see that uh, we can uh, trace the position of the PSI live uh, in real time. See the, the clip. We can see on the screen that if the PSI is positioned in the right site or not, exactly 
uh, in the century. It's a real time. You don't need to take any extra CBCT or SPR city during the surgery, just using the navigation system. The last case I will mention here is uh, the case I mentioned before, in which she had a pathologic lesion of the right side of the mandible. We use the cutting guides to yield the safe margin of the pathologic lesion, we resect the mandible and reconstruct it using PSI, patient-specific implant reconstruct the heavy mandible. To reconstruct uh, such these cases, we have two options. First is to using a reconstruction plate and, and iliogon graft. But also we have uh, another option, it's PSI, patient-specific implants. And uh, they are designed and fabricated by titanium in SL printers. <clears throat> okay, let me show you the case, uh, a real case. All the surgery, as I mentioned before, all the surgery is done intraorally by intraoral approach. She is very, very young lady. She's just 18 years old. So it's very important for her to do the surgery with less, with, with less morbidity, with no scar on the face. Uh, so whole the surgery is done by intro approach. We expose the whole lesion using cutting guide to resect the mandible, whole hemimandible resect completely, and then we construct the hemimandible using these PS5 that we have designed already and fabricated and put in during the search. So it's immediately after the surgery. There is no incision, no suture on the face. It's uh, the skin is completely intact and the symmetry of the face is is very good. Okay, three D printers in dentistry have some advantages and limitations. You know that three D printers have improved the accuracy and precision of the quality of dental products and also reduced the time of this production reduce significantly the error during the production in comparison to the traditional methods. And also it uh, gave us uh, an opportunity to customize each product for each patient. But also it has some limitations like higher cost and also sometimes a lower quality. But the cost is not always high in some products in which they are so complicated. So we need to design uh, very compli complex cases it will make some higher cost in compared with traditional methods. <clears throat> some materials are not used in 3D printers. That's another limitation. And also it may need some uh, final uh, works to finish, to finish these products. Okay, the future of 3D printer in dentistry, uh, of course, the materials are improved during these years. We have some materials in 3D printers, uh, which we don't have maybe five years ago. Now we can print even uh, zirconia by FDM, and even we can uh, make some uh, PSI using PEAK. Mm, it's a special polymer. Uh, nowadays it's, it's very useful. And also a company 3D printer with uh, AI, and um, in the future, we can automate it to product all of these production using AI. All of these will expand the application of the, of the 3D printers in the industry. So we have a lot of options in the future to create by 3D printers. Okay, finally, I have to say that 3D printing is revolutionizing the way dentists approach patient care, allowing for greater precision and efficiency. As technology continues to advance, the possibility are endless. Now I'm ready for any question. Thank you so much for attention. Thank you, Dr. Adoriza. It was a very interesting session. Uh, we went through all different aspects and it was very enjoyable. So we will open the, the room for questions. If any of the participants have questions, please don't hesitate. Okay. Thank you so much. I, again, I apologize because of this interruption during the presentation. It was unpredictable for me. Yes, no worries about it. Those are out of our hands. All right. 
So uh, I have a question, to be honest, while the participant uh, thinks about their questions. So I wanted to ask about the scanning of the cheat. Uh, which method is better? Is it uh, oral scanners or scanning the model afterward? It depends. Uh, it depends because some kind of oral scanners can't and cannot uh, scan the whole uh, arch perfectly. They have some error during uh, scanning the whole arch. So I prefer laboratory scanners if you want to have a whole uh, arch restorations. But uh, but to be honest, uh, some uh, some dentists prefer even impression, not using the oral scanners. They prefer impression to uh, in, in patient who wants the full arch restoration. All right. Uh, is it possible to say that we we were looking or or we already there looking at, at a private practice without the need of alginate or silicate, like only using oral scanner? Is it yeah, sure. We, yes, of course you can uh, move all these traditional methods away, uh, as I do in my office. It's for for five years that I don't use alginate and any impression materials in my office, not at all. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. There are right. some patient satisfaction using these techniques because it's not needed to enter the tray full of alginate in the mouth of the patient and um, and uh, working the gag reflex of the patient. Uh, that's very hard. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. So uh, so please, guys, if you have any questions for Dr. Eliza, he will be happy to answer. Don't hesitate. I know it's a very new subject for most of you guys. But uh, this is the future. <laughs> this is really the future of dentistry. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to be sharing the feedback form in the chat for the attendees. So please fill it in to receive your certificate. Can you please, doctor, uh, uh, give us a suggestion on which uh, CAD CAM software are better to use? Uh, I've been playing with the Blue Sky plan recently. And I'm not sure it's the right choice, uh, or uh, is there a better option, or all the options are kind of the same? You mean the brands of CATCAM or milling machine? No, no, 3D printing, 3D printing, like the, the software. Uh, I've been using Blue Sky Plan. This is a, so, I'm sure you're, uh, you're very- Most of, uh, yeah. are useful. Most of them are useful, but in, uh, in some cases, 3D printers are much more accurate in compared with milling or CATCAM machines but sometimes milling machine have very high quality products. So it depends on uh, which treatment are you going to do for the patient. In, uh, for example, the zirconia full crown or anatomic full crowns, the milling machine are uh, better in compared with 3D printers. Makes sense. Makes sense, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Bahiz, for your amazing presentation. Uh, me personally, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And adding to the questions of Elias, so what do you think, like, or what do you recommend for the planning phase? So if I'm trying to uh, plan for a ride or I'm trying to plan for placing an implant, so is there any specific software that is uh, open, that does have an open access or it's for free for students? You mean the software for students, free software? Yeah, for me, yes. Unfortunately, there is no free software. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, but I think the Blue Sky is uh, to some extent free in some cases. I'm not sure about that. I don't work with Blue Sky, but it seems that it's free. Uh, but I'm not sure if you can, print the final results from the software or not, but you can try it. This guy is very good and useful software. <clears throat> Interesting. So what, yeah, if someone is interested more in reading about the 3D printing, so do you recommend for him um, a textbook, for example? Yes, they want to have 3D printers in the office. Yes, of course, I recommend them. It's very useful, very useful instrument in the office. Uh, are all 3D printers the same or, uh, or no. do we need a specific? No, as I mentioned already in the presentation, there are three different printers you can use, the FDM, DLP, and the SLM. The SLM printers are so huge, you cannot use them 
in the office. But FDM and DLP are much more useful and the DLP because of the high resolution are very, um, uh, very useful in dental office. I recommend them to have, if they want to have a DLP printer in the office. Uh, I'm actually for now using an SLA, the, the Illigo uh, Mars 3 Pro. It's a 4K one, but I, I was thinking of maybe buying later the Formula and I'm not sure if there is any any benefits to, to go through, toward that direction since the SLA of Formalab or, or Splint or uh, the other company are much more expensive. So uh, my question is, uh, are they all the same? Like I'm just talking based SLA, SLA printers. Like are the cheap one, the Chinese one, like the, the German one or? Uh... Yeah, you know that the technology or um, the method in which that the SLA and DLP printers create the objects are, are to some extent the same, but in SLA printers, they use laser, but the laser can uh, cure the resin point by point. So if you take a long time to uh, create, for example, a very small dental spleen, but in DLP, because they have a source of light that can, that can cure the resin in the whole layer. So it's very, so it's so fast in compared with SLA printers. SLA and DLP printers are very useful. The SLA has, I think, has much more accuracy in compared with DLP, but DLP is much more faster. But the quality in which you want to in your office, DLP is very good printer. All right, interesting. Yeah. Excuse me, doctor. Can I ask a question? Uh, in our university, we actually had a session, a compulsory subject as a 3D printing, and we used a mesh mixer to practice. So uh, do you think that it's useful to practice at least how to make the 3D printings? Like I know that from the mesh mixer, we cannot print the real, uh, like the real one. But uh, as a practice, can we use the uh, mesh mixer? Is a good application or not? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with mesh mixer. I don't know the software, but uh, to become familiar with this software, each of them doesn't matter. It's very useful for you, yes? Any student and any dentist. Yes, for students, if we had this 3D printing in orthodontics, we had yeah. this subject and we used mesh mixer to uh, learn how to we, we can make and create the 3D printings and how we can use the application uh, as a practice because that was one of uh, I think one of our colleagues uh, question she asked about the application or software I wanted to say that we use the mesh mixer and it was useful for as a practice. Good. But uh, I had another question for the uh, surgery, for the osteotomy surgery. Can we use, do you think that the usage of the AI, it's uh, like the printing, the printer, uh, it's useful and it's like, um, like the older yes. method is much better or the newer, the new version? Of course, the AI is, uh, has entered the, in the field of the surgery already. Uh, there are a lot of uh, software now that uh, that use the AI to even for, for example, analyzing, then marking, and even to give you the treatment plan in the surgery. Yes, the AI is fantastic. <clears throat> Trust it. Thank you, doctor. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Huh? And also, can I ask one more question? Do you, yeah. think, do you think that it will be more like uh, the, as like now, for example, there is mostly the webinars uh, that can be useful for learn how to, that this AI is like uh, going through all the surgeries and we can use it. Uh, but uh, I didn't find out that uh, like some practical, some uh, classes or courses for using the 3D print things. Uh, do you manage or do you think of it to have a like a course in person course to like sure. teach us uh, the plan, I was I want to tell uh, my friends here after this session that we can uh, we can host um, any friends who wants to come to Iran and has this course here uh, it will be a very applicable uh, course using the softwares, 
using uh, 3D printers and even, even attending in the operation room that uh, we can manage all this course here in Iran. If you want, you can come here and you're welcome completely here. Which country are you from? Uh, I'm from Iran, actually, <laughs> uh, but yes, but I'm living in Slovakia and oh, okay. dentistry here, yes, and uh, unfortunately, most of the uh, webinars and most of the uh, courses, the workshops are in the Slovak language, and I'm like, I know a Slovak language, but not much, but perfect to learn it as a dental courses, really? so I would be glad to join you in Iran. So not Thank sure. you very much. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for us with you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, we, I guess we can conclude this session. Uh, please fill in the form to, to the feedback form to receive your certificate. Uh, thank you, Dr. Eriza, for the, the very interesting, very, very much interesting session. Uh, I look forward to learning more about uh, match mixing, uh, uh, making surgical guide. So thank you very much, Doctor, and uh, good honor that today. I'm and Mario. I appreciate you. You are a very good friend for me. I I'm so honored to be here among a very talented student all over the world. I hope we can see each of them very soon, maybe anywhere in the world. This maybe. is my email address. If you want, you can connect me by email, and I hope you have very good times after day. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Doctor. Have a very nice day. Thank you. You have a nice day too. Bye. Bye-bye.